hey guys welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is linus and if this is your first time being on this page welcome i hope you subscribe and you stick around you know stick around for more videos today's video i want to talk about why waiting on god is hard but worth it and i also want to talk about patience each one of us has experienced the waiting phase this is the phase where you wait for answers for as long as you can sometimes it's painful frustrating annoying confusing and sometimes fun some of us have waited for our exam results to come out we've waited to take a driving test we've waited for an interview We've waited to hear from our job applications. There's so many things that we wait for that bring us both anxiety and excitement at the same time. The kind of waiting that I'm talking about involves pain. And that's the one that I want to address in this video. If you've watched my testimony video, you know that life has never really been easy for me at all. I've never really dealt with the majority of things that have happened to me. And I have realize that most of the times i'm always relieving those memories i want to open up about certain things but i find myself holding back because part of me doesn't want to paint a bad picture on certain people so i shun away from talking about things that will affect somebody else's persona but in return it actually affects me too it hurts me to have gone through some of the things that I've gone through and not have to talk about them. If you know me, I'm the kind of person that's always looking out for people. I'm always wishing for the best for other people. And then I always feel like, what is it that I'm gonna gain out of talking about these things that will ruin somebody else's reputation? So I struggle a lot with finding a thin line on what to share about what somebody else has done without hurting them. Like I said, waiting on God is hard, confusing, frustrating, but worth more than you realize. I have had people that have asked me, how did you get to the States? And I give them like the condensed better version of how I got here, which is all true. But the things that happened before I got here are the things that hurt me the most. I will say this, if you ever adopt somebody or somebody's parents pass away and your parents take it upon themselves to say i will take this person in or you're old enough to say i will adopt you or i will take care of you as my own be a blessing to that person because you don't know what god has in store for them treat them with kindness treat them in a way that you would want to be treated put yourself in their shoe if that person has lost their family member you have to realize that this life is delicate that anybody's parents can die at any given moment even you yourself can die at any given moment so when you shun and take advantage of somebody because they are an orphan you abuse somebody you say certain words to them that will injure them for the rest of their lives that is not love that is not what it, what we're called to be lovers of our neighbors that's not what that means to love somebody is to love them even when they don't have anything to offer you i have seen wicked side and the good side and i have also seen how people change in treatment toward you when you are in a place where they never thought you would be in it's very sad because if you've experienced both worlds of how that person can treat you when you have nothing and how they're treating you when you are in a place where you, they know you can do something for them it hurts you because you know exactly what that person is wanting out of that relationship you know exactly that that person is only seeing you worth something because you're in a better place i grew up with my grandma and my grandpa and uh i had aunties and i know a house full of women is just a lot of tension a house full of women is a lot because you know you're all going through hormones you're all cramping you're all dealing with your own shenanigan so you always tend to get on each other's nerves that's just how life works but i will say that when people say hey you're abusing this person they're not meaning 
you are physically beating that person or you are making this person do all the chores in the house sometimes it might just be you saying really really wicked words to that person be like oh you're so stupid you'll never get anywhere oh you're so dumb you're ugly you're this those are the things that hurt the most growing up i used to misbehave a lot okay i used to do a whole lot of things to the point where if somebody beats me i just i'm like i'm gonna cry and i'm gonna get over it like it's not that big of a deal but i've realized that when i was a kid i was taught so many so many ugly things that have come to haunt me now i was taught so many ugly things because i was in a position where i couldn't help myself and uh i always words just hurt me more than anything and you know like you know i, I never lived a life where people were abusing me telling me what to do telling me that and i know but the things that you say really do affect somebody so when god blesses you or blesses your parents gives them the chance to take care of somebody you treat them as you want them to treat you you see them as you would see yourself and never should you say well my parents did this for you so you have to do this for me too nobody asks to be taken care of nobody asks to be in that position nobody asks to be born in a family where whose parents die so young nobody asked for that and it hurts so much that the people that end up treating you are family members like people that you love so dearly are the ones that treat you like that that hurts a lot growing up i have seen god's faithfulness and when i felt like all was lost god works through even the worst moments of my life okay i have spent nights after nights crying literally i would cry the whole freaking night just being like I, I don't care about this life anymore i don't care about none of this stuff i just i would rather i remember i used to say i would rather live in those really shanty compounds those really horrible homes than be at this stage of my life right now because there was a certain point in life when things just got so bad and everything was so hopeless and when everything was hopeless, that's when God came through. When everything was hopeless, that's when God was like, hey, you're going to the States. Literally, the moment things got so bad for me and I was about to be sent back to either the village or to a different home, God was like, no, it's not happening. The devil is a liar. It's not happening. God said, I have plans for you and my plans are to prosper you. My plans are for you to have a good future and the devil cannot destroy that which I have created. And that's what God did for me. Like literally the devil was about to blow, was about to literally dim my star. And God said, no, it is not happening. This is my daughter. Like that's how God worked in my life. And the verse that I love the most, I mean, there are a lot of verses that I love in the Bible, but 2 Corinthians 12, I love it because it says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So when you are weak, God's power is made perfect. It's like God's power is even more obvious when you are weak, when you are hopeless, when you have nowhere to go. And you know, the beauty of God is he will always be there for you. Even when you shun, even when you stray away from him, he will always find you. He will always do that for you. That's how good God is. So the fact that God's power is made perfect in our weakness, that's a beauty. When we are at the lowest, that's when we should feel God's power working in us. When the devil wants to like dim that star, that's when God works so hard for us. Growing up, I had so many times when I felt hopeless. Not to the point where I'm like, I'm going to kill myself. I never thought, I, I would never think like that. But there were so many times where I just felt like the life that God had given me, that was so sweet. I didn't want it anymore because things became so bitter for me to the point where I just felt like even living a life full of poverty is better than living a rich life where I'm always being stumped. 
But know that God's time is the best. It's hard, but it's worth it. Another point that I want to make is about patience. When they say patience is a virtue, it's really, really true. Patience is truly a virtue. The power of patience allows you and I to overcome the lies of the enemy. When the devil says you cannot make it, patience tells you you can make it. Because with patience, you can prove the devil wrong. When you wait on the right time that God has placed for you, you will definitely prove the devil wrong. When he tells you, you are stupid, you will always be laughed at. You will always be ugly. You will always be the worst. You will always be the last. You wait on God and prove the enemy wrong. You prove him wrong with every part of you because that is my story. My story is about grace patience and proving the enemy that no matter what you try to do to me no matter how many people you remove out of my life god is always going to work god will always be good even when you use the worst possible scenario of my life even when you turn my life upside down god will always be there he will always fight for me and you have to know that you have to know it and believe it and proclaim it at the same time God is always working. I personally don't deserve to be where I am, but it's only by God's grace that I made it here. I can never boast about the things that I have because all I have is because of God and His mercy and because of His grace and because He saw something in me and that something is what God to bring out of me and He wants me to see that something too. One thing before I leave guys is I want to say this. Remember that the devil comes in all forms. And one of the forms that the devil comes in is human form. The devil will literally use the people in your life to make you feel like you're not worth it. To literally make you feel like you're a loser. So be careful on who you surround yourself with. And the people that are taking care of other people, remember, always treat others with kindness. Because you never know that the seed that you sow right now will flourish and bear fruits in the future. Guys, this brings us to the end of this video. I definitely hope you liked it. If you like this kind of content, let me know. Comment down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.